Hey everybody, Scott Dowell here uh, with our Tuesday morning live stream. A little early start this morning. I put it at 11 instead of 11.30. I'm just feeling like I wanted to. Uh, so I've been traveling a lot lately and uh, have a whole lot of information, news, and all kinds of fun stuff coming up. Uh, we did have our districts for uh, the international print competition. That, that competition uh, was done last week uh, while I was actually in Houston. So I, I get to... I didn't even get to see it, but I got to see my scores and I had, uh, so you don't have to get a four images per competition, uh, for portrait anyway, and, uh, three of them went unanimous. And then one of them, which was filler did not do so well, but I didn't expect them to do well at again as districts. So the big competitions in about two months. So you're going to see a lot of really big projects I'm going to be doing on here. Um, they're going to be more for my art. Uh, degree. So the art degree requires substantial amount of work from the original photos. You can't just like take a photo and throw a texture on it and call it good, which we do a lot on here and they do very well in competition. But for the art degree, they have to be substantially changed. And I've got quite a few. I'm working on a, a, a woman with ro with uh, swappable legs, <laughs> kind of instead of trying on shoes, she's trying on different legs. So uh, that one's already kind of in the, in let's say in process, but I'm going to back up and kind of back up and show you what I'm doing. It's not very difficult to get where I am now, uh, but what I want to do next is kind of uh, important. And one of the things that uh, I want to bring forward is another piece of software I use uh, for product photography, and that's called Adobe Substance Designer. And uh, Adobe had acquired a company called Algorithmic um, last year. And that product, which you know usually we don't see as photographers um, because it's not part of our industry, is actually about to come to Photoshop. So it's going to be coming to the beta um, of Photoshop. So you'll be able to use Substance Designer files in Photoshop. And that opens the door for me to say, hey, how about I show you guys how I use this product? Because it's pretty cool. Now, the ability to create texture procedurally uh, to make things like wood or spaghetti or blueberries or whatever you happen to have, instead of relying on stock photography, you could really kind of create whatever you want. Now, it is uh, what would seemingly look like a departure uh, with obviously Photoshop ripped all the 3D stuff out because it was terrible. And now they're putting what seems to be 3D stuff back in, but they're doing it in a lot smarter way. So more of a supporting way. And there's other 3D packages that Adobe has now. There's Substance Stager um, and, and so on. So that's kind of where they're going with that. Uh, what I want to do today is we're going to stay in Capture One and we're going to work through uh, some of the images I shot at the Wisconsin PPA. So this was at... Um, a place called uh, Docs Harley, uh, which is up in, um, I don't know, somewhere near Green Bay. I don't remember the name of the city. Starts with a B. That's all I got. Uh, but Docs Harley Davidson, uh, guys got, man, this place is insane. Like he had Ferris wheels that he had made from bikes that are just sculptures uh, that are huge. Um, and he's a big country, uh, country guy. So he had all these gunfighters come in. And, or I should say, these are the people who came in for our, our convention. Uh, but they fit his motif, and he was actually one of the actors that got out there and, and put his outfit on. So we're going to look through these today, and uh, maybe do some um, kind of retouching. All in Capture One, I don't plan to take them into Photoshop uh, today. Um, then I also did a lighting demonstration, which is what you see all these up here, uh, basically how I think about lighting. And then these are kind of interesting. Uh, so I thought you'd get a kick out of this one. So if you're looking at that going, um, I don't even know why you're showing me that piece of crap. It's obviously overexposed. Like, what's the big deal? Uh, the big deal is... Uh, there's no f-stop um, because the lens actually isn't attached to the camera. It was holding the lens in front of the camera. Uh, so this is something I do from time to time to blow some people's minds. And and it went over very well, as you would imagine. People are like, what the hell is he doing? Um, but focusing is not possible. So you just scooch in and out closer or farther away from her to get the focus. Uh, you see, I kind of blew this out over here. So these are not things we're going to retouch, but I just thought you'd find that interesting. Um, I do that... Uh, uh, every so often. So these are the ones where I haven't obviously called these yet. So that one's uh, crooked. Uh, so I like that one. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and go through these how I would normally. Now, uh, I have rebound my picking key, my, my key uh, for this kind of stuff. Hit go to edit, keyboard shortcuts. And we go to select. You can see that my move to selects folder is set to P. This is the same as Lightroom. So if you're used to Lightroom and you're just hitting the pick key or P for pick, uh, which flags it, uh, Capture One doesn't do that. Capture One doesn't have a flagging mechanism because what it does is it physically picks it up and moves it to this folder. This folder contains all of your picked images. Now there's one I have of Grace here, but we're not going to be retouching that today. But um, I like this one. So if I like it, I'm going to hit P. And what it's going to physically do is pick it up and move it. Again, it's not... Um, uh, it's not 
duplicating it. A lot of people are like, well, there's duplicates of stuff. No, there's no duplicates. It just picks it up and moves it. And the idea is that when we're done, everything in this folder here is not as good as everything in this folder. So we should be able to delete this, this capture folder in a couple months. You know, I may not want to delete it right away. I remember too that uh, some of these may look overexposed, but that's because um, I want to always try and push my grid, uh, my graph to as far to the right as possible without touching the edge. In this case, I kind of failed. I can obviously I say touch the edge, but not where he's concerned. You know, that's really what I care about. I don't care about this stuff back here. Uh, obviously, I'm seeing the daylight here. Uh, so if we want to retouch this image and we care about this kind of stuff, we can get rid of it. But he he looks pretty good here. Like I'm really happy with this lighting. Uh, so I'm gonna hit P on that image. Keep that one. Um, this image is fine. I don't know that it's amazing, um, but we got light in both eyes. Well, I don't know. We'll keep looking. I don't know that I'm set with that one. And I'm basically just kind of going to go through these quickly and 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 call them. So I'm just kind of I just had him pose in different ways here. His name was Nick. Pretty cool. Pretty cool dude. And so I like this one, and I like that I blew out this background here because this is just a parking lot. These are cars. Um, we'll probably eliminate that at some point, but I like it. I'm hit P. Uh, ooh, this image is even better because uh, we didn't get the cars. But uh, there's a dumb thing about Capture One. So I've hit P on this. I go back. I got to go back to my Selects folder, find the one that I decided I didn't like as much, and then click and drag it back to Capture. There's no way to unpick something easily, uh, which I think is a, a problem. Uh, it would have been really nice to have that feature. Although, you know, I kind of really do like that image, uh, even with the background blown off. I'm going to pick it. Uh, this is me showing the broad side versus the narrow side of the light in here. Um, this is pretty good. I'll keep that one. This is about the speed at which I would call something. Um, is this one sharp? It is not. I can tell it isn't sharp. By the way, you can also use this focus mask. So what focus mask does is turn everything green that's in focus. Obviously, you see here uh, that we got a lot in focus. And you can see that it, it's right. Um, I just got to decide if I like the images or not. Like this one, again go and pull our exposure down and uh yeah but you're wondering why why on earth would you expose it like that what what's your thought process there mr detweiler well it's this part here um, if i were to expose it for his face something like this for example all this down here is going to be off the graph this is all going to be really noisy so by doing it the way that i did it um you can see we have there's no noise down in here this is you know looks great and of course we can then later darken it, but don't, I didn't want to expose for this door. I wanted to expose for his face. Uh, so this is why the graph is shoved over as far as it is. Uh, as it is, I just don't like the pose very much. Same thing here. There we go. That's a great image. Is that one awesome? It's in focus. I love that one. So I'm gonna hit five on my number pad. That is the same as the color red. So I have some shortcuts again, edit, keyboard, and just type in red. And you see, oops, how about color? Um, hmm. No. Nope. Well, sort. No. Nope. Well, there used to be a. Uh, I'm sure that's in here somewhere. Tag. Who knows? I call this thing. I did it at one point. Who knows? Anyway, it's in there somewhere. I really like that image. So hit P on that one. Oh, is this one better than the last one? I don't know. I'm gonna hit P on both. Here's another gentleman. You are just kind of standing outside smoking. So I was taking some pictures here. Obviously, I'm going to throw this one away. Hit X, uh, which is the same as the delete key. Uh, let me hit X on that one, too. Nope. Looks high there. <laughs> uh, this one's okay. It's okay. And again, it's, it's overexposed here because uh, it's actually not really overexposed. It's a shirt that's getting close here. But if we pull this down, you'll see everything's fine. But again, we got really good dark areas here. We don't have to worry about um, any sort of noise. So this whole graph thing, if you're if you're not used to me bitching about this, it's a pretty common thing I do in this channel. Half of your image data is actually stored here in the graph. So the brightest bright, your whites are not touching this edge here, and half of your data is here. So if you want to expose an image by say a couple stop by a stop like this, your image is actually half the size. Uh, so it's smaller on the hard drive as well. You just didn't get as much information. Uh, so if you're having trouble with noise, uh, that'd probably be the reason. I don't like the gun in the face there. It's uh, And there we go. That's better. <clears throat> I'll move that one to pick. Um, it's not amazing. Not amazing. Not amazing. Nope. 
It's a young lady who stopped by. We're just kind of demonstrating. Some stuff. Okay, this is actually Doc and his girlfriend and their dog. And I took a bunch of pictures in here. And uh, at some point, I'm going to Photoshop uh, out this window. So what I did when I was done, you can see there's a whole bunch of people there. I had a good, good sized group. Um, use some just random photos from the side. It might be interesting. But when I was done, I took um, a few images. I guess I didn't get it. I got this reflection and everything. I was trying to get one without the light in it. So you see I moved the light stand and then took this photo so I can edit out the light stand later and have the wall. Uh, if you're wondering why that's crooked. Here's Nick again. Uh, so I like that one. He did a great job. He was a fun guy. So this one... And we're gonna, what we're going to do here is I'm going to call these real quick. Eh, throw that one away. This is, I shot these through the window. Um, light didn't go off. I'm going to get these cold real quick, and then we're going to uh, um, color grain them. Like this one. The guy was just standing there, and I was like, oh, that one's uh, me. That one's kind of interesting. This is about the speed I call. Hey, for your back button focus people, this is why we back button focus because you try and do that with regular focus. So back button focus means I have to hold a button down for my camera to focus. The trigger on my, my camera, my shutter button on my camera only takes a picture. It does not refocus the image. So I can focus and then simply duck down a little bit and have no problem focusing through something like that. I'm going to keep that one just because it's kind of cool. Looking for something where the expression's more interesting. I think I like those. He was just playing around. <laughs> Guy had all kinds of props. Professional actors. All right. Um, one of these I really like. This one's blurry. Get rid of that one. That one's okay. That one's good. That one's good. That one's funny. And my wife's big into barn quilts, so I saw a couple of these barn quilts. I took a picture of her. All right. So we got all that's, that called. So we have in here 122 images, uh, not counting the ones uh, of this lady up here we didn't call. And we ended up with 23. So so maybe a, you know, not, not a great call rate, but again, I was doing more lighting demonstration than was actually focusing on composition, which is my bad, but that isn't what I was hired for. So there you go. I uh, really liked this one, wasn't it? I think, um, no, it was this one. This one, as we colored it red, and this one, which are very similar pictures. Um, but I think what I would do with this one is, hmm, do I like that one better? I think I do. So I'm going to clear the color off this one and add it to this one. Again, I just color grade them. So how would we do this? Let's uh, let's do it. First of all, it can't be crooked. It drives me absolutely batty. So um, because the door frame is crooked, we got to straighten the door frame out. So all these lines here have to be vertical. Um, that's just mandatory. Don't leave stuff crooked like that. It drives me nuts. <laughs> unless, you're, I'm trying to drive, unless you're trying to drive me nuts, and there's that. And um, I don't want to. And I don't want the white of the door here on the edge. I guess the red is fine. Um, but ideal, I wouldn't want that. Um, so then we're done. There we go. Looks pretty good. The exposure's pretty good. Um, it's a little bright on this side. It's a little bright everywhere, actually. So let's pull that down. So again, we're still in raw, so we can do all kinds of cray cray stuff with it. But I don't want to. I don't want to just kind of pull him down too much. So we could do this more creatively. For example, let's go back up. We we'll put L on our keyboard for a, a linear mask. We, we drag. I hit M so you can see what I'm doing. That's a mask, right? And depending on where you position your cursor, you can move it. Uh, so, for example, move it here. And if you're up on this, you can kind of straighten it around. Again, shift key locks in uh, 90 degrees. Uh, so pull this over like this. That means that the strongest effect is here, and it starts fading off in the middle and then fades off to the end. So what am I going to do with that? Well, you see it created its own adjustment layer here. Hit M to hide it. And now I can pull the exposure down just on that door, for example. And I don't have to try and, like, mask him out or do something goofy like that. I want to do the same thing on this side. So we're actually going to click the plus sign to create a new one. Hit L to create another mask. Again, I'm just hitting L and then it, it allows you to draw this, this linear mask. This. So um, kind of just position it here straight up and down. And again, and what I want to try and do is just lower the exposure over there. Um, so I'll just grab that and pull down M like this. There we go. It's not a goofy vignette. 
Uh, it would have been nice to be able to light it like this, but um, this is open-ended on this side, and this is double doors with another open end on that side. So instead of trying to mask him out and make it look all weird, I think this works a lot nicer. It looks completely legit, um, where we've got our brightness in the middle like we want, and we're happy there. Okay, what else do we want to do? Well, how about contrast? And I see a lot of people do this with just about every control in Photoshop or Capture One, for that matter is uh, you'll just grab it and go, I just want a little bit of contrast. You know, that, that, that's good. By the way, we have to do this in the background layer. Um, but do you know that's what you want? So what I do is I tend to just wiggle this thing violently both directions until I find something that makes me happy. You know, and I don't know if it's going to be up or down, but I just grab that, wiggle it back and forth until I find what I want. Same with brightness. Now, brightness is kind of like exposure, but it only works with the middle of the curve. Uh, and I tend to not play with this very much um, now. I tend to play with it later, like if we're coming out of Photoshop. Um, so I'm going to kind of leave this. Again, I wiggled it and, and felt this is where I wanted to be. Saturation, I usually don't play with saturation, to tell you the truth. But um, because we're trying to age these images maybe a little bit, I might give it a little wiggle and see what happens. <clears throat> maybe something like that looks pretty good. That's good. Um, black, we don't need a black recovery here because we uh, we exposed it properly. We're happy there. White, don't need that. That's actually the door. Uh, we could pull that down a little bit, actually. Um, it's just affecting the white part of the door there, which we don't really need. Shadow-wise, well, that's all decent. And then the highlight recovery, obviously, we don't have to worry about that uh, because we already took care of it. Although, it doesn't... Uh, as long as it doesn't negatively impact his face, I'm more worried about when you pull this thing down uh, that it does things to the face. And you can see it does a little bit. And I don't like that. Um, it creates a dark spot on the cheek. Uh, and it just doesn't uh, doesn't look good to me. So that looks pretty decent there. All right, so what else are we going to do with this thing? Well, let's color grade it. So do we want to do black and white? Uh, we could. We could enable black and white here. And then again, each of the colors, you have the ability to affect them individually. Uh, so we kind of go through. And I again, I will go through each one and wiggle it because you never know what it might affect. You might be surprised. Oh, I guess that is blue, you know. It's that whole wiggle a thing now there we go that's one now i may not i may want to add contrast now that i decided to do black and white but i'm just going to turn it we're not going to do black and white uh, we're going to try and do uh, a color grade so we're going to start with click with shadow and remember i'm on my base layer here um, we could actually create click and hold here well, actually or just click and then hit reverse or fill fill mask or invert mask either one so now our mask if i hit m shows the entire thing is filled why we do this is because we can put our color grading on this layer and then adjust the opacity of it. Uh, so if we go down, we'll say, we find what we're looking for here. Like what's the mood of the image that we want? More tan, I think. Something like that, maybe. Versus the blue that I temporarily go to. Mm -hmm. I think this wins. Midtones, again, click it over and drag it around, see where you like it. I might leave it where it is, actually. Master. If I put this over here, I'm kind of reversing everything I did. So put it back in the middle. <coughs> now I can take and adjust the opacity on that color grading if I would like. Something like that. So it's got a warmth to it now. All right, that is an extremely convoluted way to color grade this image because um, normally I just wouldn't apply the effect as strong just rather than lowering the opacity but i didn't want to i didn't want to show that capability uh, one other thing we can do is this uh, luma range if we wanted to try and, and pop some parts of the outfit here or uh, one of the other things i like to do is use clarity for this and i'm very careful not to get clarity in the skin so i'm just going to create a, a new layer and i'm going to rename this one actually um so we could call this clarity and i did actually create a separate um, style brush for this so if i go to my uh, adjustments. I have a, a custom um, down here style brush. I never see these things. Custom style brush. And I have one called hair details. And that's really what this does is it just applies a clarity. So I'm just going to put it right over his outfit here. If I hit M, you can see the mask I created. Very carefully selected mask. Took all hours, hours, I tell you, to create that mask. Yes. Yeah, I didn't just slop it on there. And you didn't just notice that it was slopped on there, did you? Um, 
I think people get caught up a lot of times in trying to make like the perfect selection for something where that actually costs you. Uh, you don't want to see the edge of something, so these blurry edges um, benefit me. Now, is that too much or too little? I don't know. Let's go find our clarity here, and then we can wiggle it and see what happens. So I think that's actually pretty cool. Structure adds a crispiness to it, um, which I don't think I like. So kind of give it some clarity here. That looks pretty good. So it's throwing details out here. It makes it pretty big. And we can do the same thing here with his eyes. I have another one called eyes. And it's actually does the exact same thing. It just creates a new layer though and names it lies so that I don't, um, I don't, I can adjust it differently from the rest of the image. We can actually use this on his mustachio here if we wanted to. Is this weird? I don't know. That was eyebrows. Does he need new eyebrows? <laughs> Sorry, Nick. All right. Actually, it's pretty decent. I'm happy with that. So that's kind of how we do this. Now, uh, maybe we go back to the saturation game we were playing a minute ago. And we pull it down a little bit further. Now again, I got to do it. I'm trying to keep all my adjustments for throw the big picture on the background layer. Otherwise, you get lost in this this cloud. I mean, yeah, I could have actually labeled these things, but um, so this is the door. This is the right side. So that's this side. There's the door, and then this is uh, this is color grading. This so on our background layer. Play with the saturation a little bit more, maybe pull it down. Something like that. I think that's pretty good. Now, say here's something I would never do, but maybe you want to do, is go to your lens thing, and there's vignetting, and you could pull this down a little bit if you'd like. I don't do this because I don't like the vignetting that crosses the legs. Um, it feels weird. Uh, the reason I don't like it typically, though, is because it's a bad lens. Basically, uh, we have a we pay a lot of money to lens manufacturers to come up with something that um, doesn't have vignetting. Cheap lenses have vignetting, uh, but maybe in this situation, I have to let it go because this is really what this would be. I mean, this would be the old west, so vignetting would have been a thing. Uh, so something like this would probably work. I'm just looking at it a bit. I do decide I want a little bit more contrast. So I'm going to go back and reevaluate this by wiggling it again. Kind of decide what looks best. Yeah, it looks like maybe I'm wrong. Uh, brightness. Just totally going back and always reevaluating these a little bit. Looks pretty good. Uh, sometimes I lift the black here, but in this case, I don't think that works real well. Just kind of uh, fiddle around. So if I hit Y on my keyboard for the before and after, you can kind of see where we come from and what we ended up with. I think that's a, that's a positive. Let me know in the comments what you think here. If there's something about this process you want me to slow down or discuss a little bit more, you know, uh, let me know. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. I'm sitting here just staring at it going, I trust my, my knee-jerk reaction. So I'll be looking at it and go, hmm. It looks like it doesn't have enough color or it looks like it has too much color or it's too yellow. Trust your gut and then adjust. So don't just kind of like, oh, that's good enough. I set that once. I'm going to leave it alone. Like I'm just keep looking at it. And I'm like, it needs a little something. Like I like that a lot better. Uh, and let's go to the color grading here. And we did lower this. This, uh, so this is going to throw a little bit more yellow in here. Let's do this the right way. So let's go back. We're going to reset our color balance by clicking on this button here. That'll reset it. And I'm just going to start again, um, but I think I'm just going to go right for the master this time. If you're not sure, you can always turn it way up and then kind of adjust it and then bring it down. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, when you try to upload your art in Photoshop and Instagram, it blurs and you don't know why. Um, I use a 1200 pixels on the wide edge when I upload to Instagram, and that seems to work pretty well. Um, that's that. I don't know. Remember, uh, Instagram and Facebook compress images multiple times, and that's going to cost you um, some resolution, unfortunately. Or not some resolution, but the quality of stuff. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm happy with that. Can I use that one again? Can I use this again? And I can, uh, but I have, um, my problem is that if I, if I just copy this straight up, like this, hit copy, it's going to copy this style here. And I come to say... Um, this image here, I think I like that one. If I come down to this image here and I hit, I hit apply, 
you're going to notice that we got all these layers as well, um, which actually didn't turn out that bad, but let's apply it the right way. <laughs> um, if we go to this thing here, there's a thing down here called the adjustment clipboard, and it's saying these are the things I'm going to apply when you hit that apply thing. Uh, so I'm okay with most of these things, but I don't want are the layers down here. I don't want any of the this stuff because yeah, obviously his eyes are in a different place, his hair is in a different place. The color grading, I could I could keep the color grading on the right side and the door. Okay, obviously, we don't work, so then we can hit apply. And now what we have are two images that look like they were shot together. And this is probably the bigger problem um, I find when I'm working on a set is you'll find that when you color grade each individual image, each one has a different feel. And that isn't going to work if you're trying to make a book out of something, for example. You want them all to look similar. Otherwise, you have different color grading on every different image and it looks a little goofy. Now, I, I try and don't do that between outfits as a general rule of thumb. Uh, all the outfits should look the same. So let's try this a little again. I'm going to hit L and I'm going to create a linear across this way. But I'm going to do something different with it this time. I'm going to kind of angle it. Hit M so you can see what I'm looking at. I'm just kind of adjusting where I want this to stop and start. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to create a new layer for this, actually, because um, it's working on the color layer right now, which we don't want to have happen. I'm going to do, there we go. <clears throat> and this is just going to be a um, clarity. I probably spelled that wrong, but I don't care. Hit L, draw out this mask again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cast clarity all over this table. Uh, I want this gun and uh, and stuff to be featured. I'm going to try and avoid his hand. Um, because again, skin does weird stuff when it gets clarity on it. I know some people are like all big into, oh, use clarity on skin. It's a great way to make it look terrible or something like that. Uh, I'm just not a fan of it. So I'm going to hit M and I'm going to go over to, again, my, I, I keep my clarity on this tab. You can move this stuff wherever you want to. I just, I just know where I have it and I'm going to go to punch and I'm going to move this up. It's going to add some texture to the table, but I don't want to add texture to his hand, obviously. So something like that. And while I'm on this exact same layer, we can do multiple things. So I may come to exposure and say, I want to drop the exposure of that a bit because it's a bit bright. Obviously the star is here, um, but I do want to see this part. And then uh, this, this here needs a little love as well. So I'm going to add a new, actually hit B. Uh, well, actually I'm going to hit new and we're going to go hat. And what I'm going to do is take my brush here and make it big and um, I want to brush in over the hat. So I'm going to hit M. I'm going to kind of brush in. I want some of the smoke. And you see skin is there. Yes, and normally I don't go over skin. Uh, what we're going to see is that this might look really obvious. Let's see how it, how it looks first. Um, I want to try and catch the skin, but I'm also going to catch some of the outfit here because we can. Like this. Just add a little texture to this here. So I'm just going to do is we're going to hit clarity and see what happens. Uh, but I don't want to hit his skin. I'm going to try and avoid his skin. So hit M and go to, again, here to clarity, punch. Actually works out okay. I was, I was really concerned about this, the edge of this mask being obvious, and it kind of is. So if it is, I might just spread it out a bit so that um, you can't see where it stops and starts. That's basically just the, the goal of that um, operation there. Because if you see the edge, that looks goofy. Uh, how about on the back side here? If I go too far, see, we can see, you see the glow above and beyond, uh, below the hat there? I don't want that. So I'm doing before and after there. I want to avoid that type of thing. So if I hit E for eraser, I can go and just kind of erase around the edge. I just don't want the edge of anything to be, to have clarity touching it. So that's pretty good. I also think that smoke's a bit bright now. So I'm going to go to exposure and pull it down a little bit. And this is where I'm going to hate myself because you can see, like, is it obvious where the mask is now? Some of the other tricks here is sometimes uh, this contrast slider can do the same thing, but not as obviously. Um, how about highlight? Highlight work? Mm, yeah, highlight actually pulled the middle down this of the smoke out there. So that's my mask. And um, any white? We could pull the white out. Mm, that's not really doing anything. Let's leave it alone. Black. Leave it alone. Yeah, so that's... Uh, that's pretty good. Like I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now I don't really want to go and adjust these other settings here because we already have another image in this set that has similar settings. And I don't want to make one brighter and one darker. Yes, they're lit differently, 
but I want them to look like they could fit on the same page. So again, vignetting here is already in place. So I could maybe push that a little bit more. So if we look at these two images again, color them both red, they should look like they came from the same thing. This clarity over here is looking a bit aggressive now that I'm looking at it more. That's one of the reasons why we do stuff on layers like this. This hat might be a bit much. So I can bring this down opacity wise or probably smarter is just come back here and lower the clarity so it's not so stupid aggressive. I was really seeing it here on the red tie more than anything else. The smoke actually benefited quite a bit from that. That uh, I thought so. What would structure do? Structure adds to his mustache and the band of the hat. And yeah, that's too crispy. You can be careful with things like this because it, um, if we're not, if you're looking at what it's doing here, uh, if I hit structure here, it's adding a micro sharpness around things like this. Um, that is not something that's going to be desirable um, for me when it's printed later. I just don't like that look. So this is, um, that's how it, how it is. That's pretty decent. And I really liked, it was one of these two. I think it's, uh, I think this one makes more sense because we can't really figure out what this is in the foreground. How about this one? So I control on both of them. And I'm gonna hit my G key uh, or, or V. I can forget which one it is, G or V. I actually renamed it to Tilde because it's what, my, what I reached for. Um, if this doesn't work for you, by the way, go up into view and you go customize viewer and choose multi view. And then you can look at more than one image at a time. And if you hold down your shift key and you use your mouse wheel, you can zoom on each one together. And if you don't hold on your shift key, they zoom uh, independently. Uh, so it's a way to kind of quickly ascertain which image you like better. This image is way more interesting. Uh, so that's the one I'm going to choose. So we're just going to go down here and I'm going to hit apply again because our same settings as before are set on this image here. So if we go and we see that we already have something that again, looks like it would fit in that book. Uh, now, so our background image here, our background is again, all the same settings as before. So we're not going to play with that. We have a color layer here, which is the color grading. Uh, I do want to add another layer here. And again, try and hit L and draw again another linear across this. So it looks like this. And again, play with the contrast of the table. Kind of pull it out a bit. But again, trying to avoid making the back of his hands look weird. Uh, if you have a problem with it, you can just hit E for erase. And if I look at my mask, you can see what I'm doing. It's just going in and erasing a bit on his hands. Again, big soft edge so no one would ever be able to tell where the where the clarity stops and where the clarity starts uh, that's really important um, this is a bit bright up here for me as well uh, so i'm going to add this is what we call this table i'm going to add one more and this is just an experiment i think if i do a linear here and i pull this whole thing down like this it's important to note too where this line is. This line is 100%. Everything everything to this line is 100% on this side, then this gradients to the middle, and this is the end. So this is at 50% right here in the middle. So depending on where you start drawing, you are affecting things like this. So if I say I want this, the hands, I want a gradient slowly down to the table, or I could be much more aggressive, something like this, which would look goofy. Uh, so again, trying to trick the eye so they can't see where it stops and starts. If I go here, and again, we're, we're dealing with raw data still, so you have a lot more power. It's so important to know that. If you edit this in raw, it's a lot more powerful than when you get to Photoshop later. So if I pull this down, something like this, I want them to be there, and I want them to be important, but I don't want them to be dominating the scene. Um, I may choose, let's see if we can do shadow-wise here. We're kind of looking for a balance. Um, I don't want to make his face brighter, but um, I do want to make the background darker. So something, something like this. And maybe raise the blacks of the room behind him a little bit so it doesn't look like it's totally underexposed. So if I hit Y, you can see where we came from to what we've got now. So a lot more interesting, I think. Um, and I still think this this is a little bright here, so we're going to go back to, I'll just put it in there, we'll call this table two. This is his hat. Let's go to table two here. And again, hit L, draw a mask up from the bottom and then lower the exposure a bit from the table. Just so your eye is going here automatically and start trying to create again, some sort of weird thing going on. Uh, we also have this, uh, what is this, a bracer? I don't even know what these things are called, but um, I'm gonna call it bracer. 
it's really bright right here. So I'm going to do, I'm going to again, a linear line. And again, it's strongest, it's strongest on this side. So if I pick it up and move it, you can see we can move it. So obviously the bracer doesn't go farther than this, but I also want it to kind of gradient out whatever, whatever effect I'm going to do here. Uh, and I think we can pull this down with a highlight. So if I just pull this highlight down, oh, maybe How about white. No, and I don't want to use exposure. Can you see the line? It's really obvious. Uh, well, let's try contrast. So sometimes contrast can be your friend. Like that. Again, pull it down, wiggle it. Don't just like move it down a little bit. See what makes you happy with it. Brightness. Yeah, this this highlight is really the important one there. Um, that's a pretty weird curve, but it works. And and I don't have to do the whole area either. This is another um, another thing. So if we we'll say we go to here and we clear the mask, okay, um, and we reset this curve. I can go hit B for brush and just brush it right on here. So hit if I hit M, you can see where I brushed on the effect. So you can have the options of using that linear, which I think is sneakier. Again, it's like a magician trying to hide, um, you know, hide how he's doing a trick. Uh, oftentimes, I will use the L because it's less obvious what I'm doing um, because it affects the whole image. But if again you see the line in the background, eh, don't do it. You know, this looks a lot better. So that knocked. That bracer back down instead of being something that draws your eye. No, I think your eye still goes in here pretty well. It is it, it is a bit bright. Um, that could have probably been solved with a little bit of uh, creative um, photography, putting a, something between him and the light, noting that this was an issue. Uh, but when you're running and gunning, which is what we were doing that day, literally, then uh, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to hit five on that. So when I mark these with fives, it means that I really like them. Now, in these cases, I'm not going to take these to Photoshop, all right? So which means these are done, which in my mind is a purple. That's actually eight on my number pad. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick them up and I'm gonna drag them into the output folder. That means that these are done and uh, they're done forever. That is the way that I note that things are done. Can I do something fun with this one? I was gonna try and obviously I don't care about the rest of the room. I only care about this part of the image here, the cigar and the hat and the eye. So bring that up, apply all of our changes from before. And I still think it needs to go darker. Background, darker. Something like that. So that should, again, mimic all the effects of the previous layers. This is a 67 megapixel camera, by the way, so I can get away with this. Um, if you don't have a really big megapixel camera, you may not be able to, to harangle this level. Harangle, isn't that? Harangle this level of detail out of an image. But um, I'll give a little bit more contrast to maybe. There you go. And it should again look like the other one. So I'm gonna hit eight because it's finished and pick it up and drag it into the output. So why I do this is means at the end of the day, years from now, when I'm tired of dealing with backing these things up, I don't care about any of this stuff. Like all these that I didn't pick, obviously I have to go through and pick them yet a, a little bit better. But all these that I didn't care about, I don't, I don't delete them, right? You're done. And then go your selects folder. These are the favorites. These are the ones you should have gotten retouched. And maybe you didn't. Maybe the client didn't buy them. Maybe, uh, maybe you liked them, but the client didn't like them. Whatever. Uh, you have to decide if you're going to keep them or not, pe not keep them. Uh, otherwise, it's delete them. And then everything you wanted to keep is in here. This is the whole set. This is everything that you loved. I'm hitting F. And uh, Control T will turn that off. So you have full screen kind of way to um, kind of present. So F will allow you to do this type of uh, thing. It works this way in Photoshop as well. I think it's L in Photoshop, I mean, sorry, for Lightroom for lights out. Um, it's F in here for who freaking knows, I guess. So yeah, so these all look like they belong in the same set and I'm really happy with that. So um, hit F again to bring the interface back, control T. And I can hit control B by the way, which is your um, if you if you like having these these thumbnails down here uh, for looking at stuff, um, I don't tend to use that. I don't mind toggling back and forth by hitting the tilde key, which is what this does. Uh, but that's that's you. Um, so I go back to selects and see if there's any of these other ones that I really love. 
like this is kind of interesting. Again, I would apply so that it sets all the same settings as before. Bring this up a bit because we don't need the, we don't need this this light gap under the table here. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about there. Do you see? I'm gonna hit reset here. By the way, you can right click and reset uh, a lot of the tools. A lot will pop up like that. Do you see this down here? This light gap. We don't need this. This draws the eye unnecessarily. So um, if you're gonna crop something, crop that out. And then again, playing with. I don't care about his elbow, like we know what elbows look like. Um, I care about his eyes and the top of his hat and the gun. Uh, and I do want to see that, uh, I do want to see his leg here. So um, I don't mind cropping it that way. I might, uh, something like that, I think feels pretty good to me, like this. Does it need a little something? I think it does. Again, using that linear part, oops, it's on the color layer, I can tell by looking at it. So here, I would create a new one table, hit L, draw that line, and lower the exposure here a little bit. Just so it doesn't draw your eye. Actually, I can zoom up out slightly. But at the same point, add some clarity to it, which should, again, make the reflection more interesting. But again, it, it, it also brings out a bit of this down here. So now you can't really tell like here's the before and here's the after. I think that's a lot nicer. I do want to be careful with the clarity on the skin though. So I'm going to hit E and just go in here. I do like it on the gun though. So I'm going to hit B for brush and I'm actually going to brush the clarity onto the gun. Uh, hit E. Got to make sure that I don't get it on the outfit um, because then I saw where that line was. Um, and I would prefer it not to be on this thumb there. I know I'm a little overly picky about that, but um, I think it makes a substantial difference. I'm gonna do one more, and we're gonna call this the left edge. Hit L, gotta use the L a lot, don't I? Pull this way, and we're gonna pull down on the highlight here. Again, for that bracer, and maybe for the shoulder a bit. But because it's a big, soft gradient across the image like this, you really can't tell you know, obviously, you could tell if I take it too aggressively, but something like this, I think it looks pretty good. It's nice. So this one also gets an eight for purple. Pick it up, and we're going to drag it into the output bin. So 10 years from now, and I'm running out of hard drive space, and I'm like, what the hell am I going to be backing up? Like, how am I going to say this? Everything in this folder is king. Everything. Anything in here, you know, it had potential, and maybe I didn't do anything with it. Like, I like both of these, but I didn't retouch either one. Well, maybe I didn't like either one. Maybe the client didn't buy either one. Who knows? But I could decide to, to delete them at that point. I think I like this one better. I just, I don't know what it is, but I like this one better. So I'm going to hit apply. And uh, this is okay over here. I don't like this gap here. We could try and get rid of that. There are tools for that inside of this product. Um, however, they... Um, uh, they drive me nuts. So let's let's buy one, have we? So let's try, let's type parking and see how well it goes. We're going to grab this clone stampy thingy and I'm just going to set it right to the edge of the door here, right there, and see if we can get rid of this stuff here. That's not too bad. That'll work. Good enough for me. Um, I don't need to make it um, any different than this. Again, we could try and crop it, but if we try and crop it, you'd have to change this to like an eight by 10, which well, we could easily do. Um, so to eight by 10 here, that's a four by five, obviously. Move it over. And again, I would watch it. This gap here would not typically be something I'd want to keep. So something like this. But in this case, I actually kind of like it. And oddly enough, um, it just terminates this edge. If I were going to take this into Photoshop, I would actually pull this door over further and get rid of it. But in this case, it doesn't bother me. Um, anything else I need to change here? Yeah, I again, look at this. This area here is just a little bit too much. I'll pull down over there and pull that exposure down. Maybe up the contrast a bit. Well, you can do either one of these two things. They both have a different effect. Um, Depends on depends on what you're trying to do with it and what you like. It just pulls it down a little bit to make it a little more centered. But uh, 
There you go. And then maybe go into the eyes. Again, that's why I have all these presets for things because I use these things so often. Just go to eyes and eye bags, just the eyes here. And uh, we did the mustache on another side, don't we? <laughs> there we go. Mustache done. Uh, and there we go. Color at eight. And then pick it up. And we want to move it to the... Um, to the output folder with its friends. Pick it up and move it to output. So every one of these now should look like they belong in the same album. They have the same color grading. They have the same kind of style. You see they're quick. When we don't go to Photoshop, they're pretty fast to resolve. Um, and I think that they look, look pretty decent. Um, using this, this, uh, where, I'm sorry, this adjustment clipboard to figure out what it is that you want to allow to go from image to image is critical. Otherwise, we would have had all these weird layers we had to delete constantly, um, which isn't handy. So that's a really quick way to, to do this. Now, um, one thing I did not do, and I, I this is like one of my, my things I, I do all the time, is I want to mark these so that I can easily distribute them to the right person. So I'm gonna go to all images here. And what I want to do is I'm going to pick all of the one of Nick here. So I'm just going to go and mark these and select them all and uh, get down here to job identifier. This is what I use. You can use whatever you'd like, but I use this. And Nick, uh, we'll call him Nick Cowboy. There we go. And I'm going to pick these up and I'm going to drag them into Nick Cowboy. Okay, and then I'll go down and find more of Nick. Here they are. And these are obviously, I'm looking at all images. Uh, so it's even looking at the ones in, uh, not not in trash, but in all the other images or all the other folders. So just picking all these here. These are all Nick. Now, why I did that is because if I go back to my output folder, you'll notice that all these have Nick Cowboy showing six images. Obviously you see six images, so you know these are all Nick. Why do, I, why do I care about that? If I select them all and I go up to my recipes, I'm gonna file them with the Copyright Office, first and foremost. And then I go here and I can say that I wanna let Nick have these for social media. Now if I do that and I hit proof, uh, we can see that it's putting my signature in the bottom corner of each, each of these, which is obnoxious. Uh, so let's move that. Um, I usually go to the watermark the hand up and let's move it to the upper side here and just trying to find a place to put it that it isn't super disturbing uh i i could export these ind independently and move the watermark into different locations uh, i'm going to lower the opacities i don't need it to be obnoxious there we go that's pretty good that's good and uh why why i did this why why do i go through this goofy step is because up here in the recipe social media if you look at it, at its job identifier is Nick Cowboy. And you see here, it's going to put it in client assets, Nick Cowboy, shareables. Can I grab that thing? Shareables, social media, because that's the recipe I have selected. So when I select this shareables directory and share it to Nick, he'll be able to pick up all these images, kind of like a Dropbox. But if I pick any other client in here, like if I pick, if, uh, let's say they pick the, uh, let's go back here. Let's go back to our selects folder and let's pick this one of Grace here. I don't know Grace's last name. I'll have to find out. And here's Grace. Now let's say I, I'm going to move Grace into output just for demonstration reasons here. So if we go to our output folder, we select Grace and all these ones of Nick. Uh, you're thinking, wow, all those are going to go into, Nick's going to end up with pictures of Grace. But realistically, if we look, it's sent to empty name. And that's because Grace's um, job identifier didn't stick for some reason. Let's go here. What is her job identifier set to? So I, I have a metadata on my, for exactly this reason. So job identifier is blank, empty name, which is annoying. Capture One calls it empty name. This is Grace here. Okay. So now if I pick this one, you see that it's set to Nick Cowboy. If I set them, it's set to Grace. But when I, when I export these, if I have all of them selected, it's going to select and send them in the appropriate folder. So this one will go into Grace's folder, shareable Grace, and this one will go into Nick Cowboy. 
So it's a really awesome way to export all of your client stuff, regardless of what client you're staring at, as long as the job identifier is set to the name of what you want it to be in your Dropbox, uh, then life is a lot easier on you. This is something that Lightroom cannot do. In fact, no other program I've ever seen does this. This makes my life so much easier because I actually actually go back like in here and I can go and down and look at my library. So if I say show this in my library, oops, not show in Explorer, wrong button, show in library. You see down here, it's down here with this client stuff. But I could go to any of these other uh, like Houston PPA and say, mm, where's that image I was looking for the other day? I can go through and I can look at these just like in Bridge, but again, if the if the job description or job identifier is set for uh, this young lady, then it will go ahead and throw it in her right Dropbox folder. So it's a really great way to be able to move around. And again, something that, that Lightroom doesn't offer. And a lot of people are like, well, I use catalogs so I can like grab, you know, quickly look at stuff. It's the same exact thing as having a catalog, except they're little individual mini sessions. It's just what it did in Wisconsin. Anyway, I don't want to export Grace's picture. This is a good one of Grace, but um, I need to retouch it. We're going to go into Photoshop and do that one, add a texture. Uh, so if you have not done so and you are a member of the channel, there are links for Dropbox that contain textures I give you every month. And I expect you to use those textures. They're, they're something I create from scratch. They're yours to use. They're royalty free. Obviously, don't sell them, but, but you can use them in your images and do whatever you want to do with them. And they're they're really nice, and I expect you to uh, kind of up your game um, by using them, and they're free. Uh, so if you join the channel, you can download all the ones in the past. Um, so uh, a good reason to join the channel, and then quit right away if you only want to do it one month, and you don't want to support the channel. Well, there's a way to do it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll make all frowning faces. So those these textures sell by the way in packs of five for forty dollars, and I think there's. Uh, I think there's 15 of them in there now. There's quite a few. So uh, worth the worth the 120 bucks if I was going to sell them. I probably will end up bundling those up at one point and selling them. Uh, but all you folks get the uh, the benefits of already having those. I will probably uh, actually set this preset up, uh, save it as a style, and throw this uh, into the folder as well for the people who are looking for Capture One styles. Uh, one of the memberships, or a couple of the memberships, offer Capture One styles. And I like this one. I used it a bunch today, and it looks good. I just stood the test of being used on multiple images and not sucking, um, which is always a nice thing. So I'm going to go here to my styles and you see, I got all these, all this kind of stuff lined up here. Um, I can go and I can go here and I can save, save clipboard as a style. I'm going to give her a name. You can see we've got all kinds of styles in here. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to call it um, uh, Cowboy Nick. So there you go. Cowboy Nick SED will be available um, for those people in the moment channel. So thanks for coming in today and hanging with me. Uh, I'm going to be launching again some substance designer tutorials very soon. So if you get confused as to why the hell you're seeing those in the channel, I uh, know that's why that is. It's those, that product is going to become more prevalent uh, to those of us who are visual image makers. And it's important for you to learn that software um, if you want to stay ahead of the game. Uh, so again, I picked it up a couple of years ago and it's been great. I've done a lot with it. In fact, one of the textures I think I gave you is a wood texture. It's not actually wood at all. It's uh, it's completely procedurally generated wood. Uh, not like you can go out and take a picture of wood. Uh, but if you didn't have wood to take a picture of, then there you go. Everybody, thanks for coming in and hanging around with me today. And I will catch you all next time. Bye-bye.